Okay, okay. Okay. Hello. So, I'm going to go over some tips and tricks for fighting and detecting spies. And sure, there are plenty of videos about how to deal with spies out there already. So, some of it will be old news. But I'm not going to go over the most basic stuff like Hey, you should look behind you all the time, constantly. If you never look forward, you can't get backstabbed. So, try that. But anyway, I will bring up some stuff I don't see mentioned that often, at least. Also, you will be able to use a lot of this information to improve as a spy as well. It works both ways. And again, some of these clips are very old at this point, but that's not a huge deal. I will also try to, in some cases, put some captions of what gave the spy away and things like that, as it can be pretty tough to tell sometimes. Okay, I'm going to start off here by going over quite a few different visual tells that gives away the fact that there is a cloaked spy. Some of it will be related to what graphic settings you have. But I would consider this to be basically a long list of bugs that should get fixed. But yeah, let me know if any of it has actually been patched already. That's very possible. So, for example, something most of you will probably already know about is the uh, disguise smoke. Basically, if you disguise before cloaking, you will have a smoke effect around you when you should be invisible. And my problem with this is mostly the fact that it is not clear at all in the game itself for the spy that it would work that way. And you see this mistake being made all the time. Mostly with the dead ringer, of course. And it's not a big deal once you know about it. You just press the keys in the right order. But why? So, if you're using the dead ringer, do not disguise unless you know that you're in a safe place and won't take any damage. Also, if you hit a spy and the smoke instantly stops moving, that spy is dead. Alright, so, moving on to some very similar things that are even more problematic, because the spy has very little control over this stuff. First off, we have the overheal particle effects and the heal beam from the medic and the payload and such that gets stuck on the spy while he's cloaked. It's a fairly common thing that really shouldn't happen. There are also a couple of overhead icons that can sometimes get stuck on the spy as well. Like if you call out for a medic or if you have enabled the critical hit text that also stays on the spy for a bit as he's cloaked, allowing you to track him. It's also the case for double dunks and stuff like that if you have those indicators enabled. I'm not sure if this is still the case after the pyro rework, but the flames used to hang around for a little too long when activating the, the, the ringer. You also get the impact sounds when you're hitting the spy afterwards, which is most noticeable for Pyro. Some more glitchy stuff includes broken models, floating vaccinator icons, random flames appearing, shadows clipping through walls, there are certain hats and items with effects that get stuck on the spy and uh, probably much more that needs fixing. Okay, so one thing that they really should change is the wall hacks you get just after you spawn. Either make it so enemy spies do not show up at all, or only give them an outline if they are within your line of sight. That seems like such an easy solution to me. I don't understand why they did it like this. All right. Those are some of the obscure things that reveal the location of a spy and really messes them up for no good reason. Well, another thing to look out for is the fall damage effect and sound. 
And I actually like this quite a bit because it forces you as a spy to think about your movement and to learn how to navigate maps silently. So, you want to look out for that blood splat effect and that crunchy bone sound. I'm going to move on now to a couple of sound and audio cues that are very useful to be aware of. And honestly, you might need headphones to even be able to hear some of these. Let's start off with the uncloak sounds. And the only thing I really want to mention about it is to keep in mind that good spies try to mask the uncloak when there's a lot of action going on, making it more difficult to hear it. So don't rely on it too much. And the dead ringer is loud. All right. Whenever someone gets killed by a backstab, headshot, melee kill, or a crit, they have a prolonged death scream. Whenever you hear this, especially behind you, you should probably turn around. Also, if you use this together with the kill feed, you can figure out the location of a spy without you having seen it. Now, you should also know how a fail stab sounds. Or even more importantly, if the spy is using your eternal reward, there will be no scream. But you can still hear the hit sound of the stab itself. Another thing I guess I'd consider a bug is that if you activate a spy's dead ringer with a headshot or whatever to get the death scream, you can actually follow the scream as he moves while cloaked. And that is also something to be aware of as a spy that some voice lines actually gives away your location. It's also useful to learn how the different guns of the spy sound. Spies want to isolate targets, so if you hear a spy shooting, it's probably a good idea to go help. Same is true if you hear any of the engineer callouts. Something's being sapped, or if you hear a sentry start beeping behind you. Most likely it's a spy. Now I'm not going to talk too much about how to identify a spy, but an important part of spy checking is letting your own team know that you are not a spy. If they are suspicious of you, just fire your gun or something. Of course, if you're playing a spy yourself, you cannot always do that, but the point is you don't want to waste their time having to spy check you. Another small tip that can sometimes help you find spies is by reading what your teammates are doing. Like here, that scout is chasing someone who is not shooting back. So just by that small amount of information, you can be fairly certain that it is a spy trying to escape. Also pay attention to if your team shoots a spy and activates the dead ringer which you can often keep track of by looking at the kill feed or the scoreboard. Okay, now let's move on to how to actually fight them. If you're decent at rocket jumping, the soldier is uh, probably the best overall anti-spy class, as you can both chase them down very well and you have a fairly easy weapon to find them while invisible. The pyro is effective at defending a smaller area, but it's not that great if you're up against a decent spy and you really want to counter him. Having high mobility is actually more important in those cases. Now, a big part of being able to shut down a spy is to predict what he's going to do next. And unfortunately, that's just something you get better at as you play more. But you want to try and think about stuff like where the safe spots are on different maps. And also keep in mind that a really good spy might not even go to those places, because it's too obvious. So really, a lot of it comes down to if you can identify what level of spy you're dealing with. 
they would have different priorities and targets and they would approach from different locations and so on. But hey, eventually you can predict what they are going to do next without even looking. Maybe. I'm pretty sure I've talked about it before, but regardless of what class you're playing, if you know that someone's looking for you, try and be unpredictable. Don't run in a straight line or don't take the most obvious path. Here are some fairly simple examples in these clips where this first spy is already disguising as I activate his dead ringer. So I'm thinking he's just gonna run for it to try and get behind us because he's already cloaked and disguised and he has a speed boost. And in this incredibly similar clip I hit the spy going around the corner as he's already disguised as a demo man which in this case makes me think he's going to take a second and re-disguise first. So in both cases they are being very predictable. On the other hand, if a spy is doing a good job of avoiding you, you don't really want to go hunting for him either. Maybe at most fire some shots where you think he might be, but there are certainly spies that deliberately try to waste your time by just running away and hiding somewhere. If you suspect that there is a spy somewhere close to you, try to find some high ground or somewhere where you can view as much of the area as possible, which will make it much harder for a spy to actually be sneaky. And it should also make it easier to chase them down as well. Okay, now let's get to the big secret of how to beat spies. The incredibly overpowered tactic called standing still. Wow. Well, mostly you're gonna do this against cloaked spies, but it can work if they're in a hurry to get somewhere as well. By doing this you are in a lot of cases forcing the spy to uncloak in front of you or take a different path that might be way riskier for him. Like for this spy, if he decides to jump out the window here, most likely he is going to end up in front of the rest of my team and if he stays it's a fairly easy kill. Here's another example where I hear the fall damage crunch behind me and because I can move faster than the spy as a soldier I jump towards the staircase to block it and now he's basically forced to uncloak in front of my team or take a really bad fight in the staircase. So just by standing in the right place to deny an area you can almost make it impossible for a spy to survive. Also, pay attention to if your teammates are blocking a path, then you can focus on the one with less traffic. Another thing you can do to deny an area or a path is to use rockets or stickies and such to basically deny an area by simply spamming it. Right here I am standing on one staircase to block it and spamming the other one with stickies, making it real awkward for the spy to get to where he wants to go. I guess I'll also briefly mention spies that use speed buffs in different ways to throw you off by doing trick stabs with longer jumps or simply moving around corners faster, stuff like that. But as always, just keep your distance and as soon as you see them go for something fancy, you back up. It is something to keep in mind though. Okay, that's it. There's definitely a lot more stuff I could go over, but I think at the end here I'm just going to add a bunch of rapid fire examples of whatever I can find that you can pause and look at if you feel like it. But yeah, bye bye.
Thanks. 